a pack of trash. Oh, sorry. Let's turn the lights on for an in the dark video game review. Um, I just purchased the uh, Revenge of the Fallen video game from uh, GameStop, and I actually filmed a review before this. But it's, when after I did that, I said, "Well, let me play a little bit more," and I like it more than I liked it when I made the first review. Uh, I've only got about two hours play time in it, but I'm going to go ahead and take a stab at it. Um, pretty much, it's better than I expected it to be. Um, the, uh, the graphics are pretty good. Uh, I don't know if they're quite as good as the graphics on the first one, which the graphics on the first one were probably the best part of the first one. Um, all the destructible environments that they had in the first one, you can pretty much forget that. The way the buildings just like crumbled and, you know, it's it not going to have all that uh, that chaos going on. Uh, when you destroy a building, pretty much all it does is go from looking pristine to looking like it's got a spider web cracks all over it uh, that's not very impressive the only things you can destroy excuse me are like water towers cars and train cars and that's that's pretty much it uh, but you got a nice little lineup of players of uh, characters you can play as um, you start off in the tutorial stage, either playing as Bumblebee or as uh, Sideways, and the only bad part I've got about this game, besides the non-destructible environments, is the fact that the control scheme, I guess, is about the best they could do for the way they did it. But I wish they did it a different way. Uh, basically. Instead of toggling back and forth between your alt mode and your uh, robot mode, you hold the button, and as soon as you let go, you're back into robot mode. You basically you have to charge your vehicle mode. Um, and here's what's I don't know, it's it's everything is all over the place on this. In order to shoot your gun, there's not a button to shoot your gun. You've got to take and hold L2 and you'll go into weapon mode and then you hit R2 to fire your gun. Where this gets confusing is whenever you have uh, someone that can fly like Starscream or Breakaway because they can hover. So in order okay so in order to transform you gotta hold R2 so you're flying but you want to hover so you continue holding, you hold L1, no, L2, and release R2 and you'll hover. And then you press R2 again and you can shoot because you're now in weapon mode because you're holding L1. They will let you hover. And then, whenever you want to fly again, if you let go of L1, I, L2, and R2, you'll fall. But if you let go of L1 and continue holding R, I, L, it's it's a lot of that going on all the time. Um, one neat thing is in the uh, in the 2007 game, you could only transform back and forth, and that's it. When you want to transform, you couldn't attack while you're doing it, and you always did the same animation. The Optimus Prime animation. From the old game, aggravated the hell out of me because every time he transform, he'd like do a big fist pump in there, Arr! and I'm like, dude, you were at a full stop. Why are you gonna Arr! like you're doing 90 miles an hour and you know? And it's like this one right here. At least you look kind of natural whenever you're transforming. It's not all pre-scripted and everything. You can do a like a tackle, like a super jump whenever you're uh, doing it. If you fly, you can do like the elbow drop of death by, uh, I think it's holding circle and releasing R2. 
And you also do a more different one, a d elbow drop, if you hold uh, square and release R2. But, uh, I said the graphics might be a little bit of a step back, or maybe it's just, you know, rose colored glasses remembering the original. But the graphics really don't blow me away like I thought they would. Um, I am having a lot of fun with it, though. The character models are great on here. That's the one part of the graphics they did very well. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, although, it's making me want to get some figures I didn't want to get before. Uh, not the Megatron. The Megatron on the game is awesome. The toy Megatron... I like the toy Megatron even less after seeing what it's based on because it's like that looks wicked the toy no um, especially in the chest but anyway uh, video game uh, control problems aside um, it's a pretty decent game I mean 60 bucks God. I remember whenever they went you know over and the PlayStation came out, I was like, 40 bucks for a game? That's a unreal. And then PlayStation 2 game at $50 for a game? That's unreal. And now PlayStation 3, 60 bucks? That's about right. No. Uh, usually I wait and get them used, but uh, Transformers, I had to do it. Um, that said, um, if you like the first game, you'll probably like this one. If you like Transformers, you'll probably like this. Uh, just casual gaming, I don't know, I think there's probably better ways you can spend your $60, um, buy Fallout 3, I mean, that is the biggest life killer I know, and I mean that in the best way I can, but, uh, this one, I can, I can see as soon as I beat both campaigns, probably not playing this ever again, because... I'd heard this was supposed to be in a sandbox game where you had a central hub and you went and you did everything out from there and you don't. It's They've got a base and then it's not even like the Armada game where you had a base and you went to different places. This one you have uh, different zones all across the earth and you go and you do a mission. And I've had missions that are only a minute and 30 seconds long. And you're done. Um, so it's, it's there's not much replay value there. Um, probably a better rental than a purchase. So anyway, this has been A Biker Trash. The uh, second ever, I think, tra uh, video game review. Uh, don't ask me for tips on this. Y'all, everybody was asking me, how do you do this on the uh, the DS game? And I don't know. I, I honestly only kept that game for about two weeks after I did the review. Uh, Y'all have a good one.